Marie Rimmer. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The focus of my speech uh, will be on stark reality that adult social care faces today. Madam Deputy Speaker, I doubt, I'm absolutely sure actually, that no one in here would argue that adult social care is not an incredibly important issue. Many of the most vulnerable people in our society rely on social care to provide them with the dignity and a life that is not just a bare existence, but one worth living. Indeed, many of our vulnerable people look forward to their only visitor of the day being from social care or the health services. And it pains me, Madam Deputy Speaker, to assert that social care within this country is failing. Up and down the United Kingdom, the actions of Conservatives-led government since 2010, and I'll speak a little bit on that later, have left our social care provision leading to a state of disrepair, and if action is not taken, could lead to a collapse in social care provision. Yes. Government must recognise that the demographics of our nation have and continue to change. As we, as we, and as we make advancements in medicine, people within our nation live longer. The National Audit Office have estimated that between 2010 and 2016 17, the number of people in need of care aged 65 and over increased by 14 per cent. Indeed, Madam Deputy Speaker, this demographic shift can be seen in my constituency, where from 2010 to 2016 and 17, uh, it increased by 14 per cent. By 2021, the over, the over 65s will form will more than double, will more than double by 2020, 21 from 2017, and that's as well as the increases in learning difficulties and dementia. So it's about to double in four years, just in my constituency. This pressure, Madam Deputy Speaker, is being admirably, admirably handled by the men and women who work within our care industry. However, this workforce is low paid, with sick paying pensions not evenly being universally delivered. Is it any wonder that the industry has a turnover rate of almost 34 per cent? And for those who stay within the workforce, there is a severe lack of training and development. And this is in large partly due to a frankly unacceptable lack of investment, which is laid bare when compared to the equivalent spending in the NHS. The lack of investment is, and pay for our care professionals, has left a, st a staffing chasm within social care. The Social Care Commission's State of Health Care and Adult Social Care in England report highlighted that there is an adult social care vacancy rate of 15 per cent. That's 110,000 nurses, health professionals and social workers not in place to do the work that is severely needed. Unpaid carers are providing an estimated £132 billion worth of care each year. The systemic loading of responsibility by central government to local authorities, legislation such as the Care Act has increased local authorities' responsibilities in areas such as deprivation of liberty, safeguards, independent living fund and transformed care services, to name a few without the adequate funding necessary to deliver them. This is further exacerbated by the continually delayed Green Paper and the future of adult social care funding, following on from the proposals and recommendations of the Dilnot report. Until this is brought forward, the future funding arrangements remain unclear. Despite this, my local care providers continue to deliver outstanding adult social care, with St Helens Cares receiving the Municipal Journal Award um, for social, St Helens Cares and Kershaw Day Centre achieving the Dementia Care Matters Award. Now imagine what they could do if they were actually receiving the funding that they required. St Helens Cares is a truly integra integrated social care and health. With one pack of records they work, all integrated in one building, keeping people at home, only in a hospital when they absolutely need to go in hospital. 
It is a joy to see it, and we can prove that it, re it restricts the number of people going into hospital by 7.5% in just a few months. We have got evidence of that now. My final point, Madam Deputy Speaker, is one that has been a common theme throughout all the points made within my speech, and indeed has been raised by many others within this chamber, <coughs> and that is of funding. Mr. Speaker, Dab Madam Deputy Speaker, I do apologise. Since 2010, local authorities have seen real term decreases in their core grant from central government, which in turn has led to expenditure on adult social care falling by almost a billion between 2010 and 2016 and gone on. This has forced local authorities to choose between delivering their social care responsibilities or their commitments as outlined in the long-term funding of adult social care report. Now, I am sure that the retort from the government benches will be that the government has made commitments to increase adult social care funding, such as the short-term funding measures of the additional £9.4 million between 16 and 20. Um, however, as stated by the Local Government Association to the report mentioned earlier, these mechanisms have a number of limitations. They also fail to deal with the short-term issues facing adult social care, let alone the long-term issues. This provide, the Better Care Fund, provided between 2011-12 to 2019-20, is just over £13 million, not to be sniffed at, but not enough to cover the cost of demand in demographic shifts, costing way above that. To put it simply, Madam Deputy Speaker, the additional funding being provided by the Government is likable to a sticking plaster on a gaping wound. It won't stop the bleeding and it won't help it to heal. A 1.4 per cent decrease in nursing homes and 32 per cent of directors of adult social care saw home care providers close or stop trading just six months before the state of the adult social care report was published by the Care Quality Commission. The number of people receiving publicly funded care has fallen since 2010 and on to 2016 by 400,000, and it is estimated that 1.2 million older people may now have unmet care needs. This has had a knock-on effect on the NHS. Some places not as hard as others, because quite frankly, working together does work. And, but in Michmas to lack of care leading to health care, out of hospitals and increased admissions, and this lack of adequate care can lead <coughs> to health complications. The issues facing adult social care within this country are grave. However, there are solutions. Firstly, Madam Deputy Speaker, I call on the Government to finally face the facts and tackle the underlying issue of adult social care in the UK and make significant funding increases for social care. As stated in the evidence given by the Long-Term Funding of Social Care Report 2018, before further reform, the system can be contemplated. The funding gap must be closed. We need to stop the uncurring austerity measures forced upon the country since 2010. And may I bring it to the attention, some are not aware of it, there was a global financial crisis in 2028. Yeah, it yeah, went yeah. right across the globe. It wasn't Labour here. In fact, Labour did start to get it going here before the Conservatives took office with the Liberals. Yeah, so it yeah. was not Labour. And in fact, that administration paid mm -hmm. off more debt than any previous government on record. And would you be surprised we inherited it from the Conservatives? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mr. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, St Helens, we, we care, we wonder, we, we, we do get funding from governments, the short term funding. We can't refuse it. We want it, we need it. We've got eight points, we've got eight point three million at the moment, better care fund. What's going to happen next year? April 20. Do we know yet? April 20. It only goes up to April 20. What's going to happen if 8.3 million is taken from St Helens? That's 17.5% of our total social care budget. Now, other councils are going to have 
similar impact. What is going to happen to social care? Secondly, Madam Deputy Speaker, let's follow the example of St Helens Care and the others. I heard it's better together, and I know uh, in Salford they've got a superb uh, experience going on over there. So it's not just going on in St Helens. But they do need support. It's a large part due to integration of social care, and it does help. It's certainly a much better experience for the recipient of the service, the member of the public. They don't want to go into hospitals. They'd much rather stay at home with the support. They have teams based in hospitals providing the single point of service, reducing pressure and providing an almost seamless transition from health and social care. It truly is working together. We need more support to help us, and sometimes a little bit more finance to help us to do it on the way. While the Government has renamed the Department of Health to Health and Social Care, I fear this change in approach has merely been in name only. I call on the Government to truly link health and social care together, not only by administration, but also in regard to workers' rights, training and financing, to deliver the social care that people of this nation need and deserve. And I call on the Minister to really seriously get back into that department, stick to your senior, senior people above you, and get them to truly integrate and finance. Give the, give the finances that are necessary. There really is no need for this austerity, and certainly not in social care. <laughs>